Hey everyone, my name is Emma and I'm a software engineer from Ukraine. So I applied to Threatcoin as a software engineer, even though it's for people who live in Lisbon. Why not? Still, there is written that this is a remote job, so I'm just giving them a chance to hire me. So let's look at what they are asking and what they are working on. Firstly, I was shocked that this project is written in Rails. I didn't know that. Uh, let's look at their main challenge. We have 160k requests per minute, half are writing. Our database is growing by one person per day, 5 million users a day send 15 million records. It's about 50 million requests to the database. Wow. Like, it sounds fun and extremely challenging. Um, so I'm not here to discuss all their proposal, but rather to focus on questions that they ask as a part of uh, the application process for this proposal. Precaution, this information is fully public. I mean, you can see the list questions in the link down below, so it's public. Uh, and I'm not sharing any secure information. Also, I want to point out that we won't go through all of them, through all questions, but I just chose four questions from their list. And I think, in my opinion, that they are extremely interesting and they show your knowledge in different areas like system analysis, software engineering and DevOps. Finally, <laughs> my bachelor's degree is needed. <laughs> First question. You want to store logs from a Ruby on Rails application. How would you estimate the amount of logs per month needed for an average load of 60,000 requ requests per minute? So, please note that my answers and thought process may be flawed. And if I provided an incorrect answer for this question, please correct me in the comment section down below. Uh, I'm not here the smartest one, so I'm also a person and I can make a mistake. So, um, how would I answer this question? To answer this question, we need to consider such factors such as log size, for example. We can choose to store either the response body or just headers, which will result in different byte sizes for each log message. So, before we can provide an estimate, we need to determine the average size of the log message we want to store. According to IBM, the average log size is 200 bytes, so we can estimate the overall size per day. One byte, it's this crazy number. 200 bytes, it's <laughs> that's a crazy number. So, and our eventual formula will be 60,000 requests per minute. We are multiplying on 60 minutes per hour on, and then on 24 hours per day and on 200 bytes in gigabytes. And eventually it will result in 17 gigabytes per day. Therefore, for months, we're just multiplying the number on 31 day, so approximately the answer will be 535 gigabytes per month. However, it's important to consider do we really need to store all these logs, or if we can to reduce their retention period from a month to two weeks or one week, this could really significantly reduce the amount of space that needed to store these logs. Next one, when can the front-end team be sure that their request data has been delivered to the API? If to answer quickly, I'm thinking that um, it could be determined when the front-end team receives a response from the backend, like with the status 200 or 500, for example, uh, for the batch request. And you can check what happened with the request from the DevTools. So you just open DevTools and tracking the request life cycle from the moment of sending till the back responses. And also, front-end team cannot logging and tracking systems. For example, like Datadog. I'm not a front-end developer, but this is how it looks for me. Uh, if any of you are a front-end developer and you know more additional information how you can be sure about that, put your answer down in the comments. What do you expect from the HTTP response with status code 467? 467? Is this code even real? <laughs> you know, it, it's it's good. It's always beneficial to have new interviews as they offer a wealth of new information. Yes, this is great. But still, what is that? Mm. Google says that it's Twitter error code, but I'm not sure that this is an answer. Uh, let's ask ChatGPT. So ChatGPT answered, and he doesn't think that it's a real status code. Like, 
he answered that this status code is not a standard status code, but it could be generated by a custom web application server. It's kind of hard to answer this question without knowing what is going on in your infrastructure and your code base. So I guess it depends on each web application. So last question for today, what is the difference between inserting 20 new records and updating 20 existing records in Postgres? So let's start. From easy ones, insert adds new data to the table, update, updates new <laughs> existing data. <laughs> Thanks, Cap. So also, insert increases the row size in the table and the byte size of the table. Update does increase the row size, but it could increase byte size. For example, if new data for a row is bigger than previous one, for example, a column held an empty string, but after update it became a string with 2000 words. Also, additionally, update queries explicit records by using pair clause. So that's why insert generally faster. This is what I found and how I would answer these questions. So let me know if you have any other ideas about answering them. And as a result, I answered on all these questions from the application and um, I'm waiting for their response. But you know, even if they won't answer on my application, it's still a good practice to go through these questions because they gave me more knowledge about some new areas. For example, I didn't know that an average log message is 200 bytes. So if you like this type of video, let me know and see you in the next one. Bye bye.